Thank you. 
Anyway, I want to thank Christian Prabhu, Christian Leota Prabhu. He sent a kind donation, I just saw. So thank you very much, yeah. Prabhu. Very much appreciated. Sorry? So we read from the Bhagavad Gita as this by the Divine Grace is Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Chapter 8, text 17. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Sastra Yuga Pariantam, Sastra Yuga Pariantam, Ahariat Brahmano Vidu, Ahariat Brahmano Vidu, Ratrim Yuga Sastrantam, Ratrim Yuga Sastrantam, Teoratra Vidojana, Teoratra Vidojana, 
Sahasrayuga Pariantam, Sahasrayuga Pariantam, Aharyad Brahmano Vidu, Aharyad Brahmano Vidu, Ratri Yuga Sahasrantam, Ratri Yuga Sahasrantam, Tehora Dravido Jana, Tehora Dravido Jana, Sahasrayuga Pariantam, Sahasrayuga Pariantam, Aharyad Brahmano Vidu, Aharyad Brahmano Vidu, Ratri Yuga Sahasrantam, Ratri Yuga Sahasrantam, Tehora Dravido Jana, Tehora Dravido Jana, Jana, Sahasra, Sahasra, thousand, thousand. Yuga, Yuga, millenniums, millenniums. Pariyantam, Pariyantam, including, including. Aha, Aha, they, they. Yat, 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 that, that. that. Brahmana, Brahmana, of Brahma, Brahma. Vidu, Vidu, know it, know it. Ratrim, Ratrim, night, night. Yuga, Yuga, millenniums, millenniums. Sasra Antam Sasra Antam Similarly at the end of one thousand. Similarly at the end of one thousand. Te Te that that Aharatra Aharatra Day and night Day and night Vida Vida Understand Understand Jana Jana People People Translation By human calculation a thousand Chatu Yugas taken together is the duration of Brahma's one day. And such is also the duration of his night. Purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai. According to the above calculation, Brahma lives for 100 years. 1000 Chatur Yugas means 4,300,000 years multiplied by 1000. This is equal to 12 hours, the duration of Brahma's one day. Similarly, he has night, making 24 hours. 30 such days make one month, and 12 such months equal one year. After 100 such years, Brahma also dies according to the law of material nature. No one is free from the process of birth, death, old age and disease, and Brahma is also subjected to it. But the special facility of Brahma is that, being directly engaged in the service of the Supreme Lord by managing this universe, he at once gets liberation. It is to be noted here that the perfect sannyasis are promoted to the Brahma Loka, which exists even longer than the sun, moon, or other heavenly planets in the upper strata of the planetary system. But one should know that Brahma himself is subjected to death. So what to speak of the sannyasis who are elevated to this planet? Om Magyanti Mirandasya Gyanan Jana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gura Namaha I was born in the darkness of ignorance and my spiritual master is divine grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada mercifully opened my darkened eyes with a torch of transcendental knowledge. I offer my humble obeisances unto his lotus feet. Jai Shri Prabhupada. So here is a little cosmology of the Bhagavad Gita. I have heard that Pretty, pretty much everyone lives 100 years, but these 100 years are relative, right? Even an ant, he also has his 100 years, but 100 years of an ant is different from 100 years of a man, and that is also different from 100 years of Brahma. So this is called relativity. Albert Einstein, the great reader of the Bhagavad Gita, also, he also read the Bhagavad Gita, he came up with this theory of relativity and he has actually proven that it's not just a, it is actually a proven fact that when you travel at high speed you, the time flows differently for you it's called uh, contraction of time and dilatation of length right? By, at, high, at high speeds the time contracts and the, 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 the 3D dimension also changes. This time, space and stuff like that, you know, he um, elaborated on this, these thoughts. And it was proven, they sent clock, you have this atomic clock, very precise, uh, they measure some portions of time. So they set an atomic clock precisely on the, the same um, same level or same uh, measure and then they sh shot one out to the orbit Earth orbit, and then it came back and then they measured again and it was delayed 
so the time there um, went slower because it was traveling at high speed around the world or around the earth so then when they came when the when that um, probe came back there was a little deviation in those clocks and many other experiments were done so that is already proven that time is relative so this is one point and another point is another point is that just like is life of a of a creature of a living being right? for example there is a, an insect in slovak it's called podenka i don't know how it's called in, in english it's, a, it's an insect that you have the larva is in the water and then one evening they all come up to the surface of the water they hatch they fly out as they're kind of like little flies like little butterflies or moths tiny they come out they immediately find a, a mate they copulate they lay eggs and in the morning all, all, all are dead they just live for one night and during that one night they manage to procreate lay eggs their whole life basically the whole active life is just one night and then in the morning they all die they don't see the daylight so this is their life so Shri Prabhupada gives this example that when you take that insect and you tell him that there is a day you know, he will laugh oh, what nonsense you are saying there is no day it's just night you know you're born at night then you your whole life and then you die what day there is no such a thing what you're saying where's the proof where's the proof <laughs> so similarly when we hear these descriptions right lord brahma he's one day 12 hours just like we of course we usually do not sleep 12 hours but just you know just divide this one whole day you divide in two parts so one is called the day you know like just now it's day slowly ending and then night comes so 12 hours 12 hours just like in the equinox there are two days in the year on the e e e equator you have you know it's um, like that but the more you move south or north the time, day and night that the length is changing according to the season but let's take like that 12 hours day 12 hours night so one day 12 hours of brahma is 1000 times 4,300,000 years so that means 4 billion 300 million yeah 4 billion 300 million of years this is one half day one uh, you yeah. know and then there is night another 12 hours so one day of brahma is 8 billion 600 million years so the they calculate, you know, they, they have this Big Bang Theory, so they think that the universe is some 15 billions of years old. So there's not even two days of Brahma past. Yeah. And they think, oh, it's primitives. Yeah. But, but you cannot conceive even these lengths. This is not the second day of Brahma. No, Brahma lives for already so many years and he lives up to 100 years so you take one of these days 8 billion 600 millions of years solar years that is one day then you multiply by 30 that is one month then you multiply by 12 that is one year and then you multiply that by 100 and that is the life, life of brahma 100 brahma's years that is the duration of this cosmic manifestation and this is our Brahma, four-headed Brahma. But there are other Brahmas also that have millions of heads. And the bigger Brahma, the bigger the universe. Right? It is in the Bhagavatam, these descriptions. So, we cannot conceive that. We cannot conceive of that. These lives, these time spans. And these 100 years of Brahma, these billions and trillions of years, that is what? Mahavishnu's one? Breath. One breath. Yeah. This Mahavishnu does like that, and for us it's billions and trillions, and you know, the whole cosmic manifestation comes and goes during one breath of Mahavishnu. 
So where from people had these concepts? Again, the question is there. In the third canto of the Bhagavatam, there is the measurement of time units from very minuscule uh, subatomic particle movements measured by time units, uh, eight fifteen thousandths of a second is a, the, the smallest time unit described there in the Bhagavatam. You did divide a, a one second into 15,000 parts and eight such parts is called one, this Sanskrit term is there for that, there is a word for that. Uh, and then you build up the time units, then it comes to one second, then one, this muhurta, right, hour and half, then one day, and then, and then kalpa, and like that, up to the whole cosmic manifestation. So where from this caveman had these concepts? You're a caveman. Your head is an empty cave, your brain is not there, missing. So you can see like that. Even today I saw one post that there is some temple where there are depictions of sperm and ovum. They were interpreting that it's some snake you going eat to eat the moon and stuff like that because they, you know Rahu and Ketu so it's like an ele ele allegory for you know Rahu eating the sun but actually it's not just that but then there are embryos depictions in the stone carved you know embryos so it starts with the sperm and ovum and then it goes through the embryo like that just like in the Bhagavatam the description is there so there is one temple which is by tradition, estimated to be 6,000 years old. But you know, the archaeologists, they sometimes do not, want, do not want to agree. But even if you take from academic point of view, at least 1,000 years old, the temple must be. So, in the temple, you have... Where is this? Somewhere in Tamil, Tamil Nadu. I can try to fish out that post on Facebook. It's some Hindu page that we're showing there, that we're describing, I, I just saw the, these carvings. Very nice, you know, sperm, there is the head, there is the tail, the big oven there. No, the snake is, you know, Rahu is eating the moon. Yeah, and then what about the embryos there, you know, umbilical cord and stuff. Mm. So that is okay, that, you know, you know, some woman, pregnant woman dies, so the Kaviraj, you know, he wants to see what is there, so he... The medical man, they make an autopsy. So you take out the embryo, okay, this is the cord, you know, you can see that. That's no problem. You can see an embryo like this, a little pea, you know, you can find it there in the womb. But the sperm, where, where, where from you have the sperm? In the Bhagavatam, there is the sperm, there is the ovum, there is the description. When did you discover the microscope? When did you construct it? And that was also, what kind of microscope was that? What could you see? Nothing. For a sperm, you need a very powerful microscope. So, uh, they do not want to accept the, that, the Vedas. So, this is also, these descriptions, they're in uh, agreement with the theory of relativity. Prabhupada gives another example. A little pond, you know, just like now it was raining here. Two or three days it was raining, so there were many ponds created. So, for an end, that pond is a, like a big lake, you know, you put him there, he's going to drown. For you, uh, you step in it, it doesn't even cover your foot completely. You know? It's just a little layer of water. But for an ant, it's a big, uh, he cannot cross over that. So similarly, when there is a description of the demigods and demons churning the ocean, they were up to their waist or up to their knees in the sea. I forgot exactly. So, yeah, you cannot go into the sea. You can go, if you want to be up to your knees in the sea, you can go five meters from the beach. You're already up to your knees. And if you go further, if you go 20 meters, then you drown like an ant in the pond. But there are different beings, different bodies, different lifespans, they have different, everything is different. So for him, you know, he can just swim in the ocean like that or he can just stand up to his knees in the ocean and use a big mountain as a churning rod to churn the ocean. Why not? Uh, you have seen everything, you went everywhere, you, you are God, that you are omniscient, you know everything, what's going on in this universe. 
you don't know what's going on in your own intestine and you want to uh, qualify whether something is real or not. So this is a supreme pride to you know, make these judgments. Oh, this is a mythology. What mythology? Your Big Bang is a mythology. Yesterday I saw also, I posted it. There was some Japanese boy, like some real, like a real brainiac, the mathematician. He was showing, dividing by zero. How it doesn't make any sense. They only use zero. And he, sh he has shown that why you cannot divide by zero. And mathematics is supposed to be the most precise science. Like by mathematics you describe the universe, everything they try to fit in the mat mathematical descriptions. And then you have this guy there and he's showing you that zero is actually a concept which is supposed to describe nothing, right? You express nothingness by zero. Mm -hmm. And then he was giving examples and equations he was trying to show, but actually, if you read between the lines, what is what can be said is that in mathematics you work with concepts that have nothing to do with reality. So how is it an exact science? If the concepts you're using that to compute, to calculate the, the universe, have nothing to do with reality. Like let's say five times zero is? Zero. Zero. So now you take five cows and you multiply them by zero, what will happen? Nothing. Nothing will happen if five cows are there, right? <laughs> Not, you cannot multiply anything by zero because there is a conservation of energy. You cannot wipe out the energy. So it's just a theoretical concept. Also you cannot divide by zero. Why are they dividing by zero? No, he was showing how it doesn't make sense. You can't, like, let's say, one, div one divided by zero. There is no result. Yeah. There is a result, like, because he was showing, let's say, multiplication, three times five, means, actually, it means multiple addition, means five plus five plus five is... 3 times 5, or 5 times 3 is 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3. That is multiplication. Then you have division. I mean, how do you say it? Um, division. Yeah, I think you use some other word, but let's say it shows you how, how, how many times you can take from a, a number, a portion, until you get to zero. Let's say 15 divided by 5 is 3. That means 15 minus 5 minus 5 minus 5 is 0. Right? So 3 times you can take 5, then you have 0. So then, so, okay, so what is 1 divided by 0? How many zeros you can take from 1 until you have 0? Infinite. One divided, so that means one minus zero minus zero minus zero minus zero minus zero, and you can go infinitely. So one divided by zero is the laying eight, you know, infinite. And then he went, okay, now let's go from the other side. Minus one divided by zero, because you also have the negative numbers. So then the result is minus infinity, which is nonsense, <laughs> right? Infinity doesn't have negative or positive. Mm -hmm. Where you put the where you put the zero in infinity, that from here is negative and from here is positive. So that is the first flaw. Mm -hmm. But then he says, but then you have negative infinity equals positive infinity, and then you use number two, two divided by zero. So one divided by zero is infinity. Mm -hmm. Now two divided by zero, that's the same thing. Two minus zero minus zero minus zero infinity. So if 1 divided by 0 is infinity and 2 divided by 0 is the same thing, then 1 equals 2. Mm -hmm. yeah. right? So he was showing like that. So the most exact signs. But why the scientists are dividing by 0 and understand what is concept? No, they do not. But the question is what about the 0? Because they use 0. How is it related to the Big Bang? They use 0. The Big Bang. Oh, it's not related. They use zero, just okay, as a concept. Yeah, yeah, zero is a concept. You're and simply trying to show that mathematics is nonsense. Yeah.
Yeah, well, and there's not just one. Like, for example, you have irrational numbers in mathematics. I'm not a mathematician. I was actually very bad in math mathematics. Me too. That's why I hate yeah, it. I'm very glad to hear this. <laughs> <laughs> I actually almost failed in school. I had the second worst mark. Number four. We had five, five grades, you know, one, one is the best, five is like you're in the complete nonsense. So I had like four, four, three. I was struggling like that. So, but they have irrational numbers. Basically, these are numbers that kind of don't exist or something like that. They just, you know, they made up some stuff and then they work with it in their computations. And this is how they describe the nature of matter or stuff like that, you know, physicians, mathematicians. Abstract. Yeah. Just like someone might say churning the ocean with the mountain. Yeah. You, you know, we might have made it up and now we work with it. Yeah, so they churn their computations with irrational numbers, you know, or with zeros or stuff like that. <coughs> so, now I kind of lost track, but, um, yeah, the, the point is relativity. Now, who you gonna, what, what, you, what you are accepting? What kind of ideas you are accepting? You are accepting one set of ideas, but not the other. On what ground? Oh, this is science and this is mythology. Well, your, you know, irrational number, isn't that the mythology? This is why it's called irrational. Because it's irrational. You say faith is irrational, so you have irrational numbers. What is irrational? Well, rational means it has some, it makes some sense. Irrational doesn't make sense. Oh, rational. Rational, sorry. Irrational. irrational, sorry. Irrational numbers. Right? Uh, I don't know exactly, you can look it up, maybe, you know, it would be a diff uh, 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 an interesting topic, but... Like that, so ultimately, again, it's about the authority. Here Krishna says, this is how it is, you know, Krishna, uh, uh, Brahma, Brahma, he is there, you know, he controls the universe, creates all the forms, etc. So he lo lives such a, such a time, and then he uh, also dies, and the time is like this, Sastra Yuga Pariyantam. This is one day, then there is one night, then Prabhupada elaborates based on the Shastra. So, this is your book of knowledge. Now you have a different book of knowledge. You have some, you know, postgraduate mathematical study. But, did you also believe in that? You say, oh, we can calculate. Or we can also calculate. Not just you can calculate, we also can calculate. Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati was such a great astronomer, he made such calculations that, you, you know, it's going to blow your mind what he was calculating. He wrote the Surya Siddhanta, the astronomical uh, treatise. And you have no idea what are the calculations in the Vedas. The time calculations, eight fifteen thousandths of a second. And it has its name. So where from these calculations are coming, Mr. Mythology? So, they have no humility. This is the flaw. We can discuss. We are not against science. We are not against, you know, this process. It, there is a benefit, undoubtedly, just like this iPhone, you know, live stream, internet, Wi-Fi, everything is based on these, also on these calculations and everything. So, we're not against that. But, they poking their nose into a sphere where they have no access and they claim to be an authority on that subject matter. There is no God. How dare you? How dare you to say? Right? So this is this is the, the problem. That they are misleading, very proud, and misleading people, uh, creating confusion. You calculate your stuff, it's okay, you can describe the laws of nature, you can describe, you know cause and effect, that's very good, why not, that's no problem, it's good, it's knowledge also, how things work, you know, you put a seed in the ground, then plant comes, so you know how to describe, you know what's going on there, wonderful, you can work with that also, so, but why you are denying God, then you cannot dis disprove, no you can prove, nor you can prove God, nor can you disprove God, so just leave it aside, don't talk about it, do your own, Work in your own field, if you have no knowledge. A fool is not recognized unless he speaks. So you speak on things that you have knowledge, that there is someone else who, has a, a, who is an expert in a different field of knowledge, that there is another scientist, everyone has his field. So you work in your field, 
And then there may be scientists who are above this uh, fragmented, I would say, uh, um, pers not pers um, partitioned. Uh, I know. I forgot the word. These sections, and they see the whole picture. They may see the whole picture. Then you know there comes higher science because you are limited in your little field. Even the academics they fight with one another, right? Because they are, their vision is limited. One conclusion contradicts another conclusion. One conclusion from one field contradicts a different conclusion from a different field. And then there is you know they do not know how to rec reconcile. So, but there is a higher science, metaphysics. You have physics, then you have metaphysics. You have theology, and like that. So, it should be, uh, at least if you want to be honest, then there should be, there should be an honest discussion. But now you go on YouTube and you have all these debates there. There are particularly a few of these scientists in America, Hitchens and Krauss and a few of them. Stunned atheists. They're like very hardcore atheists. They're physics, mathematicians, and they just, um, you know, they mock, they are very arrogant, and uh, they just talk nonsense, you know? and they're always debating with these other scientists, they have like, a theological background, Mr. Lennox, and like that, mostly Christians, but they have some good, some nice arguments, they can, they can, um, in, in certain aspects, they can very nicely smash them. Of course, that knowledge is also not complete. But there should be like an honest discourse on that, at least. By what? Why you are you arrogant? Who, who gave you the right? You know everything or what? So this is our objection. Not the science itself or technology. Everything wonderful, yes, why not? The lame man takes the blind man on his shoulders Sorry, the blind man takes <laughs> the blind man takes the lame man on his shoulders, and they go very nicely. East is lame because you know no economical power, no technology, nothing. Simply field, cow, and you know Hare Krishna. And in the West, oh, you have all the you know all the strength. You have technology, you have resources, you have this that, but no vision, blind. So you take that, you take. You strong guy, you take that guy with the vision on your shoulders and he will guide you and you very nicely go forcefully with all the facilities you have created and with a nice spiritual vision. The perfect, perfect arrangement you can make by Kunta. So everyone can live peacefully, everyone has all the necessities, people are educated, the leading class, right? right? They should be Raja Rishis. Okay, they can live in opulence and everything, but not excessively. Like, there should be distribution, proper distribution. Now there is not, 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 not even distribution of wealth. The world is full. The world is complete. Mother Earth has all the resources for everyone. Prabhupada said in the 70s, how many people were there? Five billion, maybe? He said, ten times more there can be people. The planet Earth will provide. There is so much land vacant. I am traveling all around the world. So much land is vacant. And why people are starving? Mismanagement. But this you cannot achieve without proper idea, proper education, bigger picture, or spiritual vision. If you do not recognize you know, the common father and mother of all living entities, Krishna is a seed-giving father, and the earth or material nature is the body giving mother, right? The father rejects the seed into the womb and the mother develops the body. So this is how the living entities are created in this world. The soul comes from the spiritual world, is injected by Krishna because of his desire and then the material nature gives him the body according to the desire and then we struggle here. So struggle will go on even on higher planets you have pervade death, old age and disease, but still, if you manage properly, just like you have, you know, Satya Yuga, or when Maharaj Parikshit was ruling over, or all these different Maharaj Pritu, right, 
pious kings, devotees. So then everything is abundant. There is sufficient rain, sufficient food, everything is nice. People are happy. There is no hard labor necessary. And everyone has time to cultivate spiritual life. So it can be very nice actually. Not that you want to stay here, that's not the purpose, to make it nice. You can stay, but as far as possible, you can, you know, use all these facilities so people don't have to be full of anxiety. Their only anxiety is to how to realize the self. But now the anxiety is how I'm going to eat, how I'm going to pay my bills, how I'm going to buy shoes for my children. And so they can go to school and get slaughtered spiritually. So, you know, the mismanagement. So, that's a little different topic here, but yeah. So, this is the relativity. The, the Shastra is full of such descriptions, right? Kardava Muni creating a flying city and things like that. What is that? Kardama. Kardama Muni. Devamuti was serving him for many years very faithfully, and she was very, there was such an austerity, and, and then Kardama Muni became compassionate, so then he took her for a joyride. And then he begot in her nine daughters and then Kapila Muni came, incarnation of Krishna. So, so many descriptions, mystic powers and Bhimanas and fights, right? In Mahabharata, they're throwing nuclear bombs, they're releasing mantras by sound, controlling the nuclear bombs by sound and things like that. So that you have not seen. But they uh, neglect to hear. They neglect to recognize. So, uh, you remain in darkness. So we should not be surprised by these descriptions. Uh, from different angles of vision, this is already also proven scientifically. That there is relativity. Right? You are not the measure of all things. There was a philosopher who said that the man is the measure of all things. I don't know what was his name, some English guy. Mr. Buddha. <laughs> man is the measure of all things, right? Like a solipsist. Only that exists which, which I perceive. If I stop perceiving you, you stop to exist. Right? What kind of nonsense is that? They ask this question. If a tree falls in the forest, and no one is there to observe it. Did it happen? What kind of nonsense is that? Of course it happened. Because you come in the morning, the tree is there. And then you come in the evening, and the tree is on the ground, fallen. And although there was no one to see it, it just fell down. So, what? Why you want to ponder over this? Whether it happened or not. So this is called mental speculation, you know? Dushkritina. He has a good brain, but, you know, misusing it for nonsense. Maya Parita Jnana. Instead of trying to understand the signs of the self, he's speculating whether if I do not see something happen, whether it actually happens. So, if you do not see the bullet flying from my pistol, approaching your forehead, does it mean it's not coming? Because you cannot perceive. <laughs> so, this is all nonsense. Eh? Yeah, you cannot perceive your, the disease, the bacteria in your body, so you're not sick. Yeah. You can't perceive the tumor in your brain, so that means it doesn't exist, right? No one can see it, so it's not there. Such a fool. That's why you think like that, because you have a tumor instead of brain. Haribo. So, I will stop here this um, attack so there is Lord Mataji and Ekanta Mataji so far I can see Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna Priya Mataji says Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Govinda Lakshmi Hare Krishna hmm. no questions Matajis on this more technical subject matter I just one comment yes Prabhu there was this description of the length of the uh, yogas and if you have a close up to this, so Kali Yuga is 432,000 years. Yeah. And each uh, Yuga, which is going um, up to Satya Yuga, is 432,000 years longer. Mm -hmm. Each one. 
Okay. So there is Treta Yuga. It's like double Kali Yuga. Double, double. Natural Treta Yuga, another plus for 100. Triple Kali Yuga. Yeah, triple Kali Yuga, then quadruple. Okay. So there you go. That's my biggest Yuga. So the one Yuga is like, what, five times? The Kali Yuga? 400. 400 million and 300,000 Then you can multiply 400 432,000 times what? Now you put 4 million 300,000 300,000 Divided by Divide Videlish 4 milióny 300 tisíc 4 milióny 300 tisíc 4 milióny 300 tisíc Deleno 4, 3, 2 4 milióny 300 tisíc Takto 9,950 10 times So 1 Kali Yuga Then 2 Kali Yugas Is 2 Kali Yuga Then plus 3 Kali Yugas Is Treta Yuga, and then four Kali Yugas is Satya Yuga. So pretty much, yeah. Few years up and down. Mm -hmm. And Podenka is Mayfly. What? Mayfly. Mayfly? Okay. That no, insect is called Mayfly. Mataji, Krishna Priya says, nice class on relativity, time is relative. Yes. Truth is also relative, unless we talk of absolute truth. Yes, sometimes they say, there is no absolute truth. So that, that is the absolute truth. <laughs> or everything is relative, so that is the absolute. Right? Yeah. Also, his statement is also relative, hmm? so it doesn't make yeah. any sense. So everything is relative, so what you say is also relative, then uh, why should I hear from you? That's nonsense. All the same. I saw those old drawings of beginning, like, not sure if I have... <coughs> yeah, actually, they found, they found there is another site in Ecuador, in South America, and they found also, like, it's like a disc, and it's, there is a spiral in it. It's a material called Ludite. Ludite, this gentleman, he was describing, it's a material which you cannot carve. It's something like, you cannot carve it. The, the structure is so that you just can't carve it, you know, with some chisel or something. But they found instruments, very fine instruments made of that material. And they seem to be like instruments for um, assisting birth. Like when a woman gives birth, so there were kind of like scoops, you know, to take out the child. And, and very fine and very delicate instruments. Then there was a disc with a spiral, and in that spiral there was also ovum, sperms, different embryos, different forms, even something that resembled a dinosaur, like that, depicted there. Then there was a map of the world, the globe, you know, all the Asia, everything was there depicted in some cave in Ecuador they found. And also there was different, like, a very strange objects. And they had, like, little dots on them. Like, you have a, this look, it's like a black stone. And there would be, like, a, kind of like a line. Some dots. And when you put it under dark light, you know, UV light, it shines very brightly. And it looks like a star map or stuff like that, like, very, like, crazy stuff. They have no idea what it is, where it came from, who made this, no idea. South America, full of mystery. They are saying that they are coming from monkey, so monkey made this. Yeah, his, his dad is a monkey. Make any sense, you know. Even nowadays we cannot produce such a things. Yes. So they got monkeys. Yeah. Like they are still monkeys. Yeah. Your grandma is still there, when you go to in the tree. When you go Saturday night, you can see all the monkeys. <laughs> Mataji says they have no idea of how advanced civilizations were there. Yeah, you just go on YouTube and you put this stuff and such thing, you know, in Cusco, our Jagannath Prabhu is from Peru, so he was showing us also videos. 
Such structures, these stones, they weigh, you know, 500 tons, 100 tons, I don't know what. The other day we were speaking. You can't put a razor in between these stones. And they are not like, you know, like this. All kinds of shapes, up and down and this and that. Everything fits perfectly. You can't put a hair between these blocks. Right? So, but the mythology. They could do that when I was in school. There was no, well, there was some internet, you know, there, but what kind of internet? There was nothing. You had this little stupid book on history with some drawings, some imagination of some author. And that was what you were given, and that you had to be satisfied. You could go to your local library, you know, and dive there into the books. What, what books they had there? Mm -hmm. You had no access. Now you go on the internet. You see all these, you don't even have to hear the commentaries, you know, because people also, these, you know, you have all these sensational archaeologies and all kinds of, they create all kinds of theories, so, well, maybe something into it, to it may not be, whatever. But you just see it, and you just think about it, and whatever you have learned in school doesn't make sense anymore. It's all garbage. You can see it's all just, uh, you know, some, either it's propaganda, or maybe they're innocent, but they just had to make something up. But you can see, it's nonsense, nonsense. It's a belief. Yeah, it's complete faith, yeah. fanatical, fanatics. So we do not accept this garbage anymore. This is, we accept the Vedic, Vedic thought. And it's perfect, because it doesn't include, exclude, it doesn't exclude Ecuador, or it doesn't exclude Cusco, nothing. It doesn't exclude anything. It includes everything. You may call it demigod, someone calls it aliens, someone calls it this. But there is interplanetary travel, advanced technology, everything is described. So whether this way or that way, that is captured there, these ideas. So this is our authority. Multiverse, and now they're creating multiverse because the chance of life emerging in this universe by chance is basically equal to zero. So now, to justify this event of life emerging by chance in a so-called fine-tuned universe, where every constant is perfectly adjusted, so one with another, they create an environment where life can emerge, right? So the possibility of that happening by chance is practically zero. So to justify that event, now they're creating a multiverse that in unlimited number of universes, there must be one which will be like this. Accidental. Wow, wonderful. You know, you're such a genius. If you have multiverse and it's multiplied, this zero chance. So it's. Yeah, again, you have zero. <laughs> you want to multiply zero? You have zero. <laughs> again. Yeah, Mataji says they teach theories that get rejected, yes. Cheaters with their post-dated checks, yes. In future. So, so Prabhupada, he, he brought us a different concept. Alright, anything else? Krishna Priya Mataji? Why don't we make a series like a block a video block where each time you take something interesting like this thing with the sperm and the ovum and we put pictures and we talk and we yeah, talk about Krishna consciousness yeah like the real science you can put it on YouTube yeah it's everywhere series, not just one video, but series. Evening with Dr. Makanchur. <laughs> that would be nice. Makanchur, M.A. Yeah. I even saw in this one document there was this Sadaputa, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Mr. Childress. His name is Childress. Yeah, well, Sadaputa. 
It is only Connie. Richard Thompson. Richard Thompson? Yeah. Okay. And this Mangalananda, wasn't he a scientist? Mangalananda? No, that's a musician. Mm -hmm. Because there was one, one person in this document, he reminded me. Right? He reminded me of this man. Do you know this devotee who cried when he said that I played this song to Prabhupada? Yeah, that's a musician. And he started to cry that Prabhupada had to. Yeah. Prabhupada, you know, heard what I had to say. Yeah, that's a musician. That's a... And he looked exactly like this guy in the in that series. But then I. Marco Cremo. A Cremo, I know. Okay. Yes, but anyway, I may be mistaken. But yeah, Sadapunta Prabhu, he, he was one of these intellectuals. He's a Astronomer also. He's a mathematician, no? Something like that. I just bumped into this book, the U UFO religions. Mm -hmm. So they put this on there also. Mm -hmm. That Swami Prabhupada Bhaktivedanta he came to the West, so he was not aware about the UFO UFO discussion going on already. Mm -hmm. But he brought these descriptions that in the Vedas, you know, there are all these vimanas and flying and this and that. So they put it there that we also have to do something with the extraterrestrial. And there were, I didn't read the book, of course, like a PDF. Yeah. And there are re aliens are there, and mm -hmm. all kinds of these, you know, cults. Mm -hmm. They put Iskon there, and they were mentioning also Sadaputa, and mm -hmm. he was like an intellectual heavyweight, he was like a you know, scholar. Mm -hmm. So it was not like a mockery or anything, but they just mentioned that you know, it's there in the Vedas, mm -hmm. Uf, yeah. what they call UFO. Yeah. That these descriptions are there. So Maya Dalit and Dhanava and his appears with the UFO mm. in Krishna book. Like he's fighting with Shalva and Dantabaka. Mm. So like that. Okay, thank you, Mataji. Okay. So we have good news. We have the tickets for Amsterdam. Seventeenth to twenty fourth. Yes, I've arranged everything. Wow, really? Jagannath already bought, we just need to book. Mm -hmm. And Mataji is awaiting us. Book? You need to book? I mean check-in or something. Check-in? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Wow, oh, great. Oh, I can have Mataji is expressing joy by putting hearts. Okay. Haribo! Mataji Krishna Priya says Haribo, 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 Hare Krishna. Here, Paramahamsa Prabhu will be in charge of everything as he already is. And here, Puruji, Puruji. JBC of Spain. Puruji. Puruji. I will be in my holiday end, so. Paramahamsa, the GBC for the Iberian Pen Peninsula, Spain and Portugal, when we expand. And here is Puruji Prabhu. We will go together. GBC of eating and sleeping. <laughs> Jagat GBC. Mataji is coming tomorrow to Amsterdam. Okay, okay, Mataji, we can discuss this. So, thank you very much. Oh, Grand Tarak Shimon Bhagavad Gita Kija, Shiva Prabhupada Kija, I go pray on the now the Arctic.
Gerade in der Menschen schon immer die Bestätigung stehen.